Number one gives us the graph of F and the graph of G. And then we want to express G in terms of F. So we want to say what G of X equals using F of X in our answer. And so F of X is this black function here. Okay, so this one right here is F of X and then G of X is here. And in order to get to the G of X function, that's just the F function moved to the left three units, right? So we just moved it over to the left three units. You can see that based on this X coordinate in the F function being zero and then in the G function being negative three. So now when we go to write the G function based on F, so if we moved this to the left, that means that the same X coordinate, so if I'm looking at the X coordinate of G, which is negative three, okay, those are the corresponding points. In order to get the same corresponding point on the F function, okay, that's up three units from that. Okay, so this is G of X is gonna be the F of X function plus three. And then the y's stayed the same, so there'd be no shift out here. But in order to shift to the left three, okay, g of x is equal to the f of x plus three. So again, thinking about this, okay, that means that the g of negative three point is the same as the f of negative three plus three point. And negative three plus three is zero, right? So then you match up, you can see that those, the negative, that when G of negative three when the X coordinate is three on G, that's the corresponding point to zero on the F function. So G of X is equal to F of X plus three. Number two, Tyler leaves his house at 7 a.m. to go to school and he walks for 20 minutes until he reaches his school one mile from his house. The function D gives the distance in miles of Tyler, that Tyler is from his house after a certain number of minutes. So explain what D of five means. So this means after five minutes, okay, so that input value of five. So after five minutes, Tyler is 0.25 miles from his house. So he's walked a quarter of a mile essentially. So on snow day, on snowy days, Tyler has a two hour delayed start time, which is 120 minutes. The function S gives Tyler's distance in miles from home after 7 a.m. with the 120 minute delayed start time. So if D of five equals 0.25, and this is the normal time he leaves, what would the corresponding point on the S function be? So now instead of him leaving after, you know, at five minutes, this is going to be 125 minutes after seven o'clock, okay? Because he's got that 120 minute delay plus his initial five minutes. That's when he would be at a quarter mile away from his house. So 125 minutes after seven o'clock. So then let's express um, S in terms of D. So we know that S of 125 equals 0.25. Okay, we also know that D of five equals 0.25. Okay, so our function, if we're writing it for S, so S of T, okay, so these are similar, except for that D is going to be, whoops, 120 minutes before um, whatever S of T is. So we have to take minus 125 off of that for those to be the same. So S of T would be equal to D of T minus 120. A new function N is defined as N of T equals D of T plus 60. Explain what this means in terms of Tyler's distance. So now you're looking at, so this is him leaving 120 minutes later because whatever this is, we'd have to subtract 120 minutes. That would put us back. So now this is saying whatever this is, we have to add 60 minutes to it. So this is from Tyler um, leaving 60 minutes early or 60 minutes earlier. 
All right, number three, technology is required for this one. So here's the data for a population F in thousands of a city D decades after 1960, along with the graph. So here's the function that's graphed. So this is this line down here. Elena thinks that shifting the graph up by 50, so just grabbing this line, moving it up by 50, will match the data. Um, and Han thinks that you should shift it up by 60 and then move it over one. So what functions would describe these two? So I'm just gonna call this E of T for Elena's. So E of T is going to be our original function plus 50. She just wants to move it up 50. And so if we wanted to actually write this out with these numbers, right, that would be 25 times 1.19 D and then plus 50. So just the original function plus 50. Then um, Han, so I'm just going to call this one H of T, wants us to um, move the function to the right one, okay? So to the right one would be D minus one, and then he wants us to move it up 50. So we'd subtract one on the inside, kind of the opposite of what it feels like. To the right one would be minus one, and then up 60. And so if you wanted to write this with the original function, okay, so we'd have 29 to the 1.19 to the D minus one, so you'd have minus one in that exponent, and then you'd have plus 60. So using graphing technology, graph each of these two proposed functions. So I have that here. Um, Elena's is in red. Um, I'm sorry, in blue. And then Hans is in red. And so which graph do you think better fits the data? So the blue one looks to better fit the data. And that blue one is Elena's. And it looks to fit it better because it's closer to those plotted points. We can see that here it's closer than the red function. It continues to be closer to the red function because it'll go above the red function here. Um, so the red will be further away. So it looks like Elena's is closer to the actual data. Here is the graph of f of um, y equals f of the quantity x plus 2 minus 1. So sketch a graph. So when we have this plus 2 in here, Okay, that's going to move our graph to the left too. And then this minus one on the outside will move us down one. So we're just going to um, do this backwards because this is the graph transform. So we want to go back to the original. And so we're going to have to do the opposite of these. So we're going to have to take the transformed graph and move it up one and then to the right two to undo this to get back to f of x so we're going to go to the right two and then up one to get our original so f of x would have been this and then transformed to the right two or sorry to the left two down one would have put us to that black one number five describe how to transform the graph of f of x which i've drawn in purple um, to get the graph of g of x in two different ways. So one, using only translations. So you can do a couple different things here. You just kind of want to match one of the max or mins with a max or min. So I'm just going to take this um, point here and I'm going to transform it to this point. So if I get a max to a max, that will um, land me on top of that function. And so you certainly could um, like move this max to here as well. So to the other max or to this max. So that's where I'm saying you have different options that you could do. Um, so for this one to move this max to here, we're going to have to go down two because we're going from three to one. And then we're going to go over from two to zero. So this is going to be down three or sorry, down two. So shift down two and then to the left two as well. So we go from three to one, that's down two. And then from two to zero um, is to the left two. Then it says using a reflection and translations. 
So for this, we want to reflect it over some things. You could reflect it over some, some different lines, but if you want to reflect it over, say the X axis, okay, so we would do flipping it and over the X axis would bring this point from one down to negative one. Then again, you're just going to need to match up um, like a maximum to a maximum or a minimum to a minimum. Um, so I'm just going to take this one and move it to the, move it to here. So let me get first that I reflected over the X axis that got me to where it is now. Then the translations that I'm going to need to do. So I'm at um, like negative one. And then I'm going to move over to zero. So that's to the right one. So I'm going to shift right one. And now I'm at negative one and I need to get up to positive one. So then I'm going to shift up two. So reflect over the axis. Then I'm going to go right one up two. And again, could have done different um, things with that too by moving um, different maxes to other maxes. Number six, here's the graph of a function, um, F and the graph of G, express G in terms of F. So that means you want to say G of X equals and use F here um, using function notation. So um, I'm just going to kind of combine these graphs. They're giving us points here. So they, they want us, this point is corresponding to this one. So I'm just going to draw this zero negative two here. That's the transformation we want. We want to take this one to this one. And that's just a down three. We can see that by looking at one down to negative two is a down three movement. So we are going to take the f of x function and we are going to move it down three units. So g of x is going to equal f of x minus three or moving this function down three that's what's going to put us right on that g function. Okay, so taking the point 0, 1 and moving it down to 0, negative 2.